Hello and welcome to Lower Marion Libraries Online. On this show, we'll feature some great videos celebrating Mother Earth. All Lower Marion Libraries are open for in-person visitation, but some programs remain virtual. Visit lmls.org for all the details. As always, though, our librarians bring you a variety of educational and interesting programming for your viewing pleasure. This is in addition to a whole suite of apps and websites with links to a huge variety of content, like Consumer Reports and Mango for learning a new language. The options are endless. But now, it's on to the videos. Miss Gwen from Belmont Hills Library starts us off with an Earth Day craft. Enjoy. Hello and welcome back and hopefully you've picked up your craft bag. And if not, like I said, you can watch the video and you can see the supplies um, I've gathered and you can get them yourself. So first there's the instruction sheet and it has my email at the bottom. So when you're done, take a picture and send it to me and I'll put it on our Facebook page. Then there's grow a pine tree from a pine cone fact sheet. There's some interesting facts on here. You can read all about it. And also some little instructions if you want to do this again without watching the video. And also there's a pine cone coloring page. As you can see, there's all different kinds of pine cones. So maybe you can walk around your neighborhood and see what different ones you can collect. So the ones I've been able to find are like the long, thin ones. And we'll see if this works. You have to let me know. So in your kit, you should have all of that, plus a cup, a pine cone, a fun sticker to put on your shirt or a sticker book. And this is the smelly kind. You scratch and sniff. Mmm, smells like strawberries. And then I gave you a spoon and a bag of dirt. So make sure you have some newspaper or a paper plate out so that you don't make too much of a mess. Okay, first thing you're going to do, get your supplies out. You have your cup, you have your dirt, and you have your pine cone and your spoon. So you want to pour the dirt carefully into your cup. So you can spoon it in with the spoon, or if you're very careful, you can kind of pour it in. So you want to pour like maybe halfway, maybe a little more than halfway, like two thirds, like that, okay? Because you don't want to plant like the entire pine cone in there. You might want to plant like maybe up to here. I'm going to push that in. And then I'm just going to, with the rest of my dirt, I'm just going to spoon some in around the edge. This is the tricky part. So just put a little bit of dirt, see? And you're just gonna kind of pour it in. Turn it around, pour. You can move your pine cone around. You can, you can adjust it back and forth. Pour the dirt in. If you have some leftover dirt, that's fine. I kind of gave you extra, just to be sure you had enough. looks pretty good. There you go. I have a little bit left over. Okay, and we're going to pretend there's water in here. And what you're going to do is you're just going to maybe fill, like, you know, just a little bit, just on the bottom, and pour it in. You can pour it around the edge here. You can pour it on top. And just water a little bit every day, not too much, because if you water too much, then the pine cone will rot. So we don't want that to happen. And then hopefully in a couple weeks, you'll start seeing some sprouts. So when that happens, you'll let it grow a little bit more and then you can take the whole thing out and you can plant it in a bigger container or your garden somewhere. So fingers crossed that this works and then we can plant another tree. I hope you enjoyed this and send me pictures. I'll see you later, bye. You can find this video and lots of other videos on the Library System's YouTube channel. Just visit lmls.org and click on the Programs on YouTube button. Well, we have to take a break, but stay tuned. There's lots more to come here on Lower Marion Libraries Online. 
We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Lower Marion Libraries Online, where we feature interesting and exciting online programs offered by our six libraries. Did you know you can keep up with all the latest news at your favorite Lower Marion Library? Visit lmls.org and click on the Services tab. There you can register to receive updates from any or all of our six libraries. Now, back to the videos. We join Miss Ashley from Ludington Library for a fun STEM experiment, Rainbow Skittles. Hey guys, you're here with Miss Ashley for another science experiment. Today's science experiment is going to be um, easy rainbow Skittles. So you're gonna wanna have a plate. You're going to want to grab some Skittles. I put them in a little container to grab easily and some warm water. So what you're going to do is grab a plate with sort of a slope to it. Put your Skittles all around. You can put them in patterns. You can put all the same color on one side. And we're just, gonna just put them around the, the edge of the plate where the where it meets sort of in the middle. Now I'm not really doing a pattern, I'm just kind of tossing them on here. And you're going to want to make sure you have enough. So if someone does go home out at your home, make sure they grab a big bag. Don't leave any holes in your circle. All right, so as you can see, it is, the Skittles are all around the plate. Now we're gonna take our warm water. It could be hot water, it just needs to be tap water. There's no really amount of water that you need to put in, but slowly do this so that you don't move the Skittles off of where they are laying. And you're going to wanna just pour it slowly. And then just wait a couple seconds, like 30 seconds. So I'm actually gonna move the camera to show you what happened when I poured the water on one of the Skittles. Where is it? Right here. You see that when I poured the water on one of the Skittles, the coating of the Skittle started to come off and you can actually see that it's starting to make a rainbow. So the longer that it sits, the more your rainbow will come out. That's really, really cool. Now, I challenge you to try it with another type of sugary candy. Um, do the same thing, put it around the plate, get warm water, hot water is preferred. Um, my spigot actually does really hot water, so that's what I used. And let's show a closer look of what truly happens. Look at that, how cool is that? Now, since this is a clear plate, maybe I can master picking up the plate and showing you that the bottom of the Skittles are actually white, or maybe I could just pick one up. So this was the bottom of the Skittle that was on the plate, and now there's no more sugary coating on it. So this is what happens when you combine warm water and sugary candies. It melts, the warm water melts the sugar right off the candy. I hope that you had fun watching. I hope you tried at home. I hope you're staying safe and tune in for more with Miss Gail, Miss Jackie, and Mr. Laurent. See you later. 
Once again, you can view this video and lots of other great videos on the Library System's YouTube channel. Just click on the Programs on YouTube button on lmls.org. And be sure to follow the Library System's other social media sites on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Well, we have to take another break, but please stay tuned. There's more great virtual library programming to come. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Lower Marion Libraries Online, where we're honoring our mother, Mother Earth. Lower Marion Libraries are open for in-person visitation, but please remember that some programs may still be virtual. Please visit our website for all the details. Well, here's our final video for the month, Flower Collage from Miss Melody at Ludington Library. Enjoy! Hey everyone, it's Miss Melody from the Ludington Library Junior Room. Welcome back to Try It Out with Miss Melody. Today we are going to be doing a fun spring art project that also includes some recycled materials. If you were with me last time, we made a fun cherry blossom using a plastic bottle as our stamper. And today we're going to be using something else that you might have lying around the house that is probably just going to get recycled or go into the trash. And that is magazines. So you can use any type of magazine you have lying around the house that people are done reading because what we are going to be looking for in these magazines is just different colors. We're going to be using lots of different tiny little pieces of ripped up magazine which are all different colors to make a flower collage. So today you're going to need just a few different materials to make this collage today. The first thing you're going to need is of course magazines. So as I said, any kind you have lying around, you're going to collect them. You might need a, a stack of maybe four or five just to get you started and make sure you have enough pages that have lots of different colors on them. You're also going to need a piece of paper. I am using cardstock today. You don't need to. You can just use regular printer paper if that's what you have. You're also going to need a pencil to draw an outline of your flower, some glue to connect all of your little magazine scraps onto your paper, and then there are two things that you might want to have. The first one is a pair of scissors. When I made this flower, I used my scissors to cut out little pieces of the magazine, little pieces of paper. You can do that if you'd like. You can cut out little pieces if you'd like or you can also just use your hands to rip out little pieces. They're going to look very similar, just a little bit different. Using scissors is great for preschoolers who are trying to work on their scissor skills. If you're doing this project with a little bit younger children, you can just have them rip up the paper, and that is also really good for their fine motor skills. So either way is fine. The last thing you're gonna need, or you might want to have, is some sort of little container to store your pieces in while you're collecting them. We're going to be collecting lots of different colors from the magazine and we're going to want to keep those different colors separated from one another. So you're going to have maybe a pile of green and a pile of red and maybe you are super organized and you can keep things in a pile in front of you and they'll be fine. I am not quite that organized so I'm going to be putting my different colors into different Ziploc baggies. You can use little baggies, little bowls, little plates, whatever you have around the house to kind of keep the different colors together and separated from one another. So the first thing that we are going to do in making our collage flower is draw an outline of the flower so we'll know where to put our little piece of paper when we're putting it together. Now if you're working with really young children you might need to do this for them because it's a little bit trickier. If you are an adult who's doing this project or an older child you'll probably be able to do this yourself. So I'm going to start by drawing a pair of parallel lines to make my stem. I'm going to take my pencil here, draw just two lines here near the bottom where my stem will be. Just like that. And then I'm going to draw the flower up top. So I'm going to start by putting a circle in the middle, kind of in the middle of my paper, where the middle of my flower would be. And then I'm going to make five petals around the outside. You can do more or less if you would like. I just think five looks really good. I'm gonna make them kind of large 
almost so they're going all the way to the edge of my paper because the petals are really the most important part, I think. That's where we're gonna be able to put a lot of colors. I'll move these just a little bit bigger. You are gonna be covering over these pencil lines so they do not have to be perfect. If you don't like the way they look, you can always erase and try again. So this is what I have so far, my five petals. At the bottom, I'm also gonna planning to be putting some brown piece of paper for dirt, but I'm not gonna draw where I put that because I know where the bottom of the page is. I know where my stem is. I'm just gonna put them around the bottom. So now I'm ready to start collecting my different colors. When I did this flower, I really wanted it to be purple. So I collected lots of different colors of purple to make this flower. But with the one I'm making right now, I think I would like to make each of my petals a different color. So I'm gonna be collecting a lot of different colors. And before I start ripping out pieces of my magazine, I kinda of wanna make a plan in my head of what colors I'm looking for. So I know that I would like a green stem. So I'm gonna look for colors that are green, little sections of green in my magazine. I would like some dirt that's brown, so I'm gonna look for brown. And then I think I would like lots of different colors for the petals. So maybe red and pink and purple, blue, maybe yellow. And I think I might do the center of my flower orange. So all those different colors I'm gonna start looking for in my magazine. So I'm gonna set this aside. I'm not ready to fill in anything yet. But I'm gonna pull out my magazines. And what I'm gonna be looking for are pages that have just big sections of the color that I want to use. So this is blue. I am collecting some blue. So I am going to rip out the part of the page here that does not have any words on it. So just like that. So this is a section of blue and then I'm going to rip that into smaller pieces. When I am putting my flower together, I want pieces that are not enormous and not tiny, kind of in the middle like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Not too big, not too little, just right. So that I'll be able to fill in my petals and my stem. Now the, the blue that I just ripped out, even on the same page, they're not exactly the same shade of blue. It kind of changed as it went along. This is a darker blue, this is a lighter blue. And that's okay. That's gonna give my flower lots of different shades in it, which is what I'm really looking for. So I'm gonna make a pile of blue, and actually I'm gonna start right away and get organized and put this blue into a baggie, just like that. So this will be now any other blues I find, I'm gonna put in here as well. And each of my bags will have a different color. Sometimes you can find pages that are almost entirely the color you're looking for and you'll get a lot of it. Sometimes you are maybe looking for a color and not finding a lot of it. You might have to use just a little section, like maybe I could just use this little bit of red on this page if I'm looking for red and not finding it. But you're gonna just keep going through your magazine and either ripping out or cutting out little pieces of different colors and collecting them. So if I select this red, I would rip off the brown that's around the outside and I would maybe just use a little bit like that. I'm gonna be collecting mine in different bags and once I've collected all that I need, I will show you how to put it together. All right, I am all finished collecting my colors. So I have baggies of all my different colors. We have green, we have yellow, orange, purple, pink, red, blue, and brown. And now I'm ready to start putting my flower together. So I'm gonna start by doing my stem. So I want a green stem. I'm gonna pull out my green colors, put them on the table here and have lots of different shades. So I'll kind of have to decide which ones I wanna use the most. I really like kind of these colors. So I'll probably use a lot of those. So I'm gonna start by putting some glue down. If you're using a glue stick, it will probably dry a little bit as you're working. And so you might have to um, you might have to reapply it and that's all right. If you're using a glue bottle, that's a little wetter. It probably won't dry quite as fast. What I like to do when I'm making a collage is start by outlining the outside of the space I'm working on. So I'm going to work on outlining the outside so I can kind of make the stem look straight the way that it is here. Um, see how I'm using the outside edge is nice and straight and the inside I'm still going to need to fill it in. So I'm going to use my different colors here 
to fill in the stem area. Now some of this might get covered up if it's near the edge of my petals. I probably will be putting other colors over them, but that's okay. It's all right to have some layers. And it's okay if your stem is not perfectly straight because in nature, you'll probably notice that not all flower stems are perfectly straight. They kind of look a little bit different, definitely. Blue has dried, so I'm gonna add a little more blue. There we go. My stem is all done. Then I'm gonna do the same thing with my petals. So I'm gonna start working on the outside of my petal first, kind of outline it and then fill in the missing gap. So I'm gonna start with pink here. I'm gonna put lots of glue in there. Then I'm gonna start outlining the edge of my petal with the pink. And just like with my green, I have lots of different shades of pink. It's not all the same color. And that's okay. I don't have a lot. And if you have different textures, maybe some of the things that you cut out will have like a little bit of a pattern in them and that will look really neat too. They don't have to be just a flat color. They can have some texture. So I'm almost done outlining the edge of this. And I'll show you what that looks like. So this is one, now I've outlined the edge of the petal. I'm ready to fill it in. And I'm gonna do that with each and every one of my petals with the center of my flower. And then I'm gonna add some brown down at the bottom. And when I am done, I will show you what it looks like. Okay guys, this is my finished flower. I have all of my different petals of different colors. I was able to fill them in just like I wanted to. And if you take a look, you, can, you will notice um, the pieces that are cut and the pieces that are torn look a little bit different, but they both look like a really neat collage. When you are doing this project, probably the part that will take the longest is ripping or cutting up the little pieces to use in assembling your collage. Putting it together actually takes less time than collecting the pieces, and you'll probably end up collecting a few more pieces than you actually need, and that's okay. So if you're doing this project with especially really young children, you might wanna spread it out over maybe a couple of days. Use one day to collect all your pieces, and then another day to assemble the pieces if you're working with a child that doesn't have an attention span that's quite as long. But I hope that you enjoy making this um, project, that you're able to use some really cool recycled materials and make a piece of art that you are proud of. Just a few quick reminders. We are still running our poetry contest until the end of the month. Winners will get tickets to Longwood Gardens. We are um, judging in the categories of elementary, middle school, and high school. And you can submit your poems about trees to the junior room. This week, we are also giving out some grab and go planting bags for um, Earth Day, which is coming up on Friday. So if you'd like to give us a call and reserve, um, they have some seeds for planting, also some little mini greenhouses so you can watch um, your seeds grow at your house. So um, I hope that you enjoyed this project. Thank you for joining me today and we'll see you soon. You can find this video on the Library Systems YouTube channel. Click on the Programs on YouTube button on lmls.org. Well, we're out of time for this episode, but please tune in again next month for more of the best online programs from our six Lower Marion libraries. You can visit lmls.org anytime for more information, including our calendar and event scheduling system, and a whole suite of apps and websites with links to a huge variety of content. If you have any questions about what services are available or any other specific requests, you can always call your local library at the numbers listed on the screen. Thanks again for watching Lower Marion Libraries Online. We'll see you next time.